Um, I hope everybody had a really good day yesterday. Um, I personally went out last night and ate some really good street food. So if you haven't done that yet at the night markets, I highly recommend it. You can come and talk to me later about my favourite dishes. Um, I'm Tess from WordPress VIP at Automatic, and I have the pleasure of introducing you to our first speaker of the day. Mina Tamang is a C SEO analyst at Codewing Solutions. She's here today to help you break free of traditional SEO and embrace user-centric marketing. I'm here for it. Please welcome Mina. Few months back, my boss handed me a book called Product Led SEO by Eli Squares, a renowned figure in the SEO community. As he gave a book, he said, Mina, this is a book that I want you to read. This is really helpful. And whatever you learn, try to implement in our marketing strategy. I accepted that book by saying, of course, sir, I will. While accepting that book, I was a little hesitant because I have to spend my weekend reading that book. Nonetheless, thanks to that incident, I got to discover new strategy, product-led SEO. And here I am today, speaking on that very topic with the title, Beyond Keywords, User-Centric Approach to Product-Led SEO. But let me quickly introduce myself. I am Meena Tamang, and I came all the way from a beautiful land, Nepal. For the past six years, I've been living and breathing SEO, but lately I felt the urge to push beyond the boundaries and explore in the field of product marketing. So currently, I'm also enhancing my skill in product marketing. Now, back to the story. As I was reading the book given by my boss, one statement jumped out at me. Too often, SEO efforts begins with just a group of keywords, a list developed by the marketing team or by the founders, based on their knowledge. The keyword then becomes the main goal and they are input into any keyword search tools that finds out even more related keywords. Then, they use this big list of keywords to create articles for their website. It's like a grocery list for writing. The list does not change. Even if the article don't do well, or the people search things differently. So they keep on writing new articles just because those words are on the list. And this is a quite common practice found in the traditional approach. So let me ask a quick question to the audience. Raise your hand if anybody follows the traditional approach or the similar keyword-driven approach to SEO. OK, I see the hands. So do you guys believe, so here's my next question. So do you guys believe that focusing on keywords makes the most effective SEO strategy? Yes? OK, I see no hands. That means no. Yes, you guys are correct. It's not. So what's the problem? In reality, this approach, the traditional approach, is limited and inadequate. And unfortunately, I had followed this process for years. And keyword searches had always been my go-to step for every new SEO project. But as I said earlier, this approach is limited and inadequate. Here's why. First, this approach is leisure focused on just keywords and an expect expectations of generating high position on just those terms. And this approach often fails to consider the actual pain points and the needs of our target audience. Now, what if I say if there's a better way? Product led SEO. I'm sure you are wondering what is product led SEO. Imagine your product being so valuable that it naturally attracts users without excessive marketing efforts. That's the power of product-led SEO. In this approach, instead of using SEO to market the product, the product itself becomes the SEO driver. It involves shifting the focus from keywords to user needs. And here, 
The goal is not to generate traffic for the sake of traffic, but to generate engaged user who will eventually become our paying customer. To truly understand what is product-led SEO, let's explore its contrast with the traditional one. In keyword-driven SEO or the traditional SEO, it's all about chasing the trends and algorithm. We spend hours researching and targeting keywords, hoping to climb the ranking ladder. And our primary focus is always on researching and targeting keywords that our users are searching for in relation to our product or the industry, and for which we rely on keyword research tools to find out the high volume or the low competition keywords. Then we create articles, especially for those terms. And there's still people who squeeze keywords in every sentence here and there, sacrificing the clarity for the sake of ranking. Our success is measured by the metrics like keyword ranking and traffic. But have you ever wondered, those generated traffic ever engaged with our product? Do they become our paying customers? And the changes in the trends and algorithm send us scrambling. We are forced to constantly update and adjust our content just to stay afloat. Whereas in Progler SEO, we this the keyword-driven content and focus on crafting product that solves the real problem and deliver values. We create content that is educational and informational, explaining how the product works and its benefits. Think like demos, tutorial, case studies, user reviews. We educate, inspire, and build trust by showcasing the power of our product in an action. This approach utilizes data from user behavior within the product to identify the pain points, frequently used features, and common search queries. Forget about the vanity metrics like your ranking and traffic. We track user engagement, growth, and conversion, measuring the overall real impact of our SEO strategy. And this approach is not dependent in any changes or the algorithms, especially the algorithms. By focusing on user needs and providing values, we build an SEO strategy that evolves with our product. Now, it might seem too good to be true, but it's not. There are a lot of companies who have implemented this strategy and achieved the success they wanted. To name a few, Slack, Zoom, Jepier and even TripAdvisor are the great example of product-led SEO. But even though there were a lot of successful examples of product-led SEO, I was still in dilemma whether I should completely teach my keyword-driven approach or the traditional one. The thing is, product-led SEO is a concept taken from the product-led growth, which is a popular business strategy for mostly for the SaaS product. And to add, it, to add more detail, this approach is more suitable for the big companies and a product that have a solid user communities. As my work often involves the non-SaaS and the small businesses, I question its adaptability. However, the book offers some valuable insight that was worth exploring. So this led me to explore the new approach hybrid approach, breezing the gap between the prog-led SEO and my traditional approach, allowing me to tailor the strategy to each client's specific needs. And this hybrid approach proved successful. And that's why today I'm here to share those insights with you and also to clear some misconceptions about SEO that every business owner and the digital marketers or the SEO should know. So with this in mind, today I have prepared four agenda that I will be speaking on. So moving on to the first one, let's talk about the hidden challenges in the world of SEO. One of the reasons a company may leave its SEO potential unfulfilled is because not the lack of knowledge or effort, it's the systematic issue. 
as your team operating like an isolated island. For example, let's take two scenarios. In smaller organization or just simple website, the best SEO practices are easy to follow and implement. The changes happen instantly, the data flows freely, and everyone's a collaborator. Now, step into the larger companies. It's quite the opposite. To make changes in this environment is a quite long process and goes through an intense collaboration. And to make things trickier, they often leave their SEO team alone disconnected from other crucial departments. And that's a big, big problem. Imagine if the other department might have a valuable insights or the resources that could have benefited the SEO team. For example, the sales team might know the keywords the customers are searching for. Or the product team might have the information about upcoming features that could have been optimized. Now, without a communication or the collaboration, these opportunities could be missed. SEO often requires technical changes to the website or the platform. Now, without collaboration with the developers, the SEO team might face delays or roadblocks on implementing their SEO strategy. Without open communication and collaboration, the decision made by one department can negatively impact the work of others. Therefore, Breaking down the walls between the teams and department is crucial for solving this problem. And to solve this problem, both the SU team and executive have a significant roles to play. In most cases, in big companies, executive are the main point of contact. Now, if they don't prioritize the SU initiatives, the progress may hinder. And it, in addition, it's also the duty of SU team to clearly and convincingly pitch their ideas with the valid data and the arguments. The rules and the guidelines for SEO at scale is the same for every type of website. But because of communication issues, most of the big companies implement the best SEO practices at slower pace. Raise your hand if anybody has uh, faced the similar challenges in your workplace. Communication issues. So how to address this? So to address this, I would recommend building a dedicated SEO product team. By building a dedicated and cross-functional team, a representative from all the relevant departments like user experience, design, product team, uh, SEO team, executives, content marketers, sales teams, helps to bring the wealth of diverse perspective and valuable contribution to the table. And for the effective communication, the team must hold regular meeting, like weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly, to strategize, discuss progress, or address any obstacles that may have arised. So my main takeaway here is, by investing in dedicated and cross-functional team and fostering the open communication, we can unlock the full potential of SEO even in the com big or the complex organization. So moving on to my next point, that is crafting a user-centric content strategy. In the past, SEO often resembled keyword assembly line. Keywords were chosen based on the search volume and stuffed into metadata. And they were jammed into content at unnatural densities and forcefully anchored into external link. Content production fell like a warehouse packing boxes. Meet a daily quota of X amount of content, each containing Y words and Z keywords. This whole SEO process worked and did, it didn't because things have changed. Google, the most used search engine, is way more advanced now, and we should stop pretending it's the same search engine it was a decade ago. While the way the Google works has changed, but its goal had never. That is to help each user to find the best solution, not from a spammy website, from a reliable sources. But if many businesses create content just for the sake of ticking boxes 
and hoping to attract users from various channels and convert them into leads or customers or whatever their KPI might be. While doing this, they often fail to consider their pain points and actual need. So what should we do instead? Just like Google prioritizes the user experience, the content needs to be written with user in mind. Plain and simple. If it does not provide anything valuable to the user, it's useless. It's important to remember that in SEO, there will always be two distinct audiences, the search engine and the users. Search engine needs words even one that does not make sense to the user. It is the user that needs sensible content or the products, and they are the one that initiate the transaction that lead to business success. Instead of chasing the search engine ranking, we need to put our user first, and then only the search engine second. <clears throat> so, now, people might think that in traditional SEO, people do care about the user intent and the pain points. Yes, they do. But when it comes to creating articles, they tend to prioritize keywords with high volumes and good ranking potential. I used to do that too, but now I do things differently. First, I try to understand who am I writing for, what they struggle with. That means I start with understanding my users or buyers persona and their journey map. Then only I do the keyword research. And second, I don't just chase the keywords with the good volumes and the ranking. I also consider the keywords that might not be super popular, but they're still relevant and important for my target audience. So my key takeaway here is it's all about creating content that people want to read, not just some algorithm likes. It's all about helping the users, and that's what a good SEO strategy should always be. So moving on to the third point, that is SEO is done by human. Let's talk about the tools. There are several tools that I use daily, and without this tool, I would not be able to work efficiently. Sometimes I even doubt my ability to do the SEO and wonder, am I truly driving the SEO process? Or am I simply the puppet master to this tool algorithm? However, in my opinion, relying on tool isn't a big problem. The major issue lies in blindly believing everything the tools report. SEO tools are valuable resources for the businesses owners or the digital marketers. Providing insight into keyword research, on-piece optimizations, competitors research, and many more. But it's important to acknowledge that these tools are imperfect. Sometimes their data can be wrong. And even more importantly, they lack the human intellect to necessarily clarify why or why not behind the metrics. For example, let's take a fancy fitness tracker. They give you numbers, but they can't tell you why your score is and what you need to do to improve your health. So just like you wouldn't rely on a fancy fitness tracker to diagnose your health, you should not solely rely on tools to diagnose your website SEO health. Okay, let me share another practical example here. So pretty often in my workplace, our support team is flooded with a request from our customers claiming their website has a poor SEO just because of a red dot sewn by some tools. Now, my question is, if any tool, any SEO tool, shows the green dot, or for example, sorry, for those unfamiliar, let me explain some of the SEO tools assigns overall readability and SEO score using color-coded dots. Green for good result, yellow for needing improvement, and red for having a critical issues or many issues. So now, here's the question. 
if any tool shows that my page has a green dot, for example, does that mean my page will rank higher in the search engine? Maybe, maybe not. But Google can't see whether I have a green dot or the red dot. They are just a guide, nothing more. The reason why I am highlighting this is SEO is a job for a human. So no matter how advanced the technology becomes, everything still requires the human intellect. And the next point is, when you heavily rely on the tools, you tend to prioritize the search engine over your user. In the process of making your website score perfect, you might fall into inauthentic practice of making your website less useful for your users and ultimately hurt your SEO performance. My key takeaway here is tools are valuable resources when used correctly, but never replace the human intellect and critical judgment with any tools data. So moving on to my last agenda, that is measuring performance. So let's talk about the measuring performance in SEO. And I'm confident that everyone understands this essential step. However, I want to discuss common misconception about defining success. The critical, for the most SEOs and the digital marketers, the critical metric of success is ranking in search result. And even more importantly, the true achievement is measured by the number one position one occupies. I used to take a great pride in raising in top position for any keywords. However, I soon realized the clicks without conversion are hollow victories. High ranking means nothing if it does not convert into sales. And it's true that the traditional SEO metrics like keyword ranking and the traffic still hold value. But they are only the part of picture. We need to consider metrics that reflect the user experience and the product value. Therefore, the true North Star of SEO performance is the business's primary goal. Be it download, leads, revenue, sales, anything else. So with this, my agenda comes to an end. But let me share one experience with you that sums up everything that I've covered so far. And to add more detail, since the beginning of my career, my goal was to achieve number one position and drive more traffic to the website. I didn't care about the aftermath. If I was achieving the goal, I thought I was doing good SEO. However, my clients and my boss were never happy with the results, despite of those achievements. Now back to the story. So back in 2022, we decided to write blogs on various topics. And let me clarify, those articles were for the product website, where we sell our product, not the dedicated blogging website. So first, we conducted the keyword research to find out the high volume keywords and good traffic potential. The list was extensive. So we wrote articles with the help of AI and aimed to publish it at least three per week. We continued the process or the strategy and published more and more articles. Everything seemed progressing well. After a few weeks, our website traffic spiked significantly. Now as an SEO expert, I thought I was achieving my goal. However, this gender traffic had no real benefit. The disconnect between the content and our offering left user confused, leading to no sell. So we failed to meet our business primary goal, that is sales of our product. So, as this generator traffic had no real benefit, we decided to remove all those articles from our website. After a few months, the traffic spiked, dropped significantly. 
And the new update of Google further impacted our website ranking and our website traffic continued to decline. So let's talk about the mistake that I made in this strategy. First, my initial focus was on the metrics like keyword ranking and traffic. This led to the crucial mistake, prioritizing the search engine over user. This user-centric approach gap resulted in content that missed the mark. Further, we disregarded the pain points and actual needs of our users. A crucial insight gained through understanding the buyer's persona. Adding to the problem, we heavily relied on the AI tools and keyword research list to produce high volume of content in short time frame. While working on the product website, the focus should have been on the actual user of the product. Instead, we became obsessed over achieving the number one position and expected to, to propel this to our business success. So let's talk about the changes I've made after this incident. The first and most crucial principle is, regardless of which approach you choose, be it product-led SEO, traditional SEO, or any trailer approach, the focus should always be on the users. For example, if you sell product, then shift your focus from simply highlighting the features to emphasizing its benefits and the solution your product offer. Explain how truly your product can solve their problems. And this is where the informational and educational contents becomes crucial. But the content you deliver to them should not be built solely on keyword research. So now I prioritize first to understanding my buyers or the user's persona and their journey map. This enables me to understand the real pain points and their needs. Then, only I do the keyword research. Yes, I haven't abandoned the, the keyword research. Now, I also consider the keywords that my peoples or my users are actively searching for, regardless of their stays in the buying funnel. And then I also consider the keywords with low volumes, but higher user relevance. And when it comes to measuring the performance, SEO performance, I consider the business's primary goal, that is, whatever the goal is, be it sales, conversion, or anything else. And lastly, it's also important to remember that lasting business success cannot be achieved alone. It requires collaboration. The SEO team alone cannot achieve its goal. It needs support from other crucial departments. So with these changes in the strategy, what did I achieve? Consistent organic traffic and the sales. And this is just the beginning. And there is much more to achieve, and I'm hopeful that I can share those achievements with you in the next WordCamp Asia. So with this, now I would like to conclude by saying that what did I wanted to convey, uh, convey to you is, let's get free from the search engine obsession and be the champion for our users. Thank you for listening to me, and like, I would like to hand this stage back to our MC. Thank you so much, Mina. Um, we have some time for questions. So if anybody has a question, stick your hand up and we have a um, microphone here. I do have a question for you, Mina, <coughs> if I can kick things off. Um, you mentioned earlier that you have used um, AI to create content, but I'm wondering what other role AI has had in your process with SEO strategy or, or this, this content creation? Okay. So AI tool is like our arms and legs. These days we cannot function. So but 
So how am I using AI tool in my current strategy is, I do use it to make a strategy, to create a content, like, like everybody does. But when it comes to the final output, what I do is, that needs a human input. Like, or am I meeting my actual user needs? So AI tool has been useful, but I'm also poor, not forgetting that it needs a human intellect to what to necessary done, to need to be done. Cool, thanks. Anybody here have a question? We have one just down here, and another one over here, next. Hi, Meena. Hello. Uh, so you talked about generating content based on buyer persona yeah. and uh, journey maps or yeah, user journeys. Yeah. So can you uh, tell a bit more about the journey map part as to how we can utilize that to generate content? Okay. So first to understand the buyer's persona or the user persona, which is a popular practice for the, uh, actually in the user experience and the design. Right? So it doesn't need to be like same. We can make ourselves buy persona in the SEO as well. So for that, you need to consider the every possible uh, target audience in the beat, in the awareness stage. As um, people might not know the marketing funnel, like there's awareness, brand awareness, considerations, decision making, purchase, and post purchase, all those stages. So we need to consider all the people, potential people in every stage. Then we need to understand them, what is their pain points in each state, which is possible through communicating with the audience. So for that, I recommend doing the surveys, feedbacks, one-on-one -on -one interviews, and that might not be possible for the every companies, but we need to try to communicate with our audience however it's possible. And that's how you journey the map. So then, yeah, that's the persona we need to create. Okay, so my question is, um, as you mentioned that in the past you used generative AI to um, create a content for constantly. Yeah. And when you change the strategy, how, um, how, is, how frequent and how, how often you post the content how, and how long the content should have inside in each content? Okay, so that's a good question. So for the publishing, the number of publishing, you right? And for the longer length of the articles. So for that, I consider about the topic, not the length. So am I teaching them about tutorials? Then obviously it's going to be very long. And people might think that short article would won't work. And for now, at least in this uh, current scenario, as AI is giving the most answer by instead of searching people, like we can quickly search things and the AI will give answers. But now what I do, change, I have what changes I made in my content is, I would like to tell story to the people and share experience that AI tools cannot do. So I do not prefer, like I don't have a cons like exact numbers for the length. So when I'm telling story, it's gonna be like above 1000 articles. So just focus on what you are covering. Don't uh, think about the length. That's I would suggest to you. Uh, there's a question down here, I think. Hi, yeah. I'm Hello. wondering what um, role video plays in your strategy. Sorry? Videos such as YouTube videos, you know, you search often and typical, depending on what you're searching for, you can see a video result in the first position as well. So you're talking about the videos? Yeah, what YouTube, changes? part of your articles, okay. adding it in addition uh, to your strategy. Oh. Okay, so the video marketing or the video strategy is very good for the, all the product companies because it really shows how your product works and will helpful for the users. So I haven't made any changes to the video because we've been focusing on the, its benefits and it's how people can actually use it. So I don't know, maybe we were on the right uh, path from the, since the beginning. Before I knew about the product SEO, I made the strategy. But because they always our focus had been to show the people, the real people, how they can use our product, mm -hmm. like tutorials. Like it, it might be very long videos. We don't do the promotional videos often. We try to do the tutorial videos. So I haven't made any changes. So I also suggest you to, if you are looking for the videos to promote your product, try to make it like it's a demo, like people's uh, most people have seen like anyone wants to use any phones or apps, they must have gone and searched for how to use it. And people might have shown each and every step, right? 
instead of promoting that any app they have used or any phone or any gadgets. That's how we do the videos, and we haven't changed anything. Thank you. We've got time for a couple more questions, if there are any. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Mina. Um, we have a little gift here for you on behalf okay, of the thank you. organizers. Thank you.